They say having a happy family is but an earlier heaven. All else comes second for a man who has a loving partner and children. With that said, it is bizarre to most that some parents can abandon or abuse their family. But have you ever heard of those who kill their own family? Taking another one's life is crazy enough, but to take a family member's life is just unfathomable. Well, today's case not only killed his wife, but also went ahead to claim the lives of his five children. Why did he do what he did? What were the repercussions of his wild actions? Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James and today we will be looking at the case of a man named Misak Damas. Misak Damas was an American citizen. He was born on the 2nd of July, 1976, which meant he would be just 33 years old at the time of his crimes in 2009. Flowing from the stories of several other criminals, it can be observed that they all have some form of emotional trauma, physical abuse, or family issues. And this man has proven to be no exception to this precedent. The early stages of a child's growth are so important as they make up a huge part of who that child will turn out to be. Simply put, many of these criminals are merely adults with scars from their childhood. Of course, most people with intense childhood traumas don't become criminals in their later lives. It is simply no excuse, but it must be addressed when discussing how the family man in Misak Damas suddenly turned into a terrifying killer. Misak Damas was born in Haiti, where he had a childhood characterized by poverty and violence. To make matters worse, Misak's parents left him in the care of an extended family member when he was only 10 years old. At the time, they were moving to the United States of America, and for some reason, they could not take their son along with them. However, at the age of 19, Damas left Haiti and relocated to the USA to live out the rest of his life. Shortly after, he took up residence in the US and began working as a chef at a local alehouse. He was said to have described himself as the best of the best. For a time, all seemed to be well. Misak would go on to marry Jerline Du Damas and with her have five beautiful children, ranging from 11 months old to nine years old. Two days before the murders, his wife had brought up the topic of divorcing him. He said that he had responded by threatening to kill her. The following day after the discussion of divorce, Damas stalked her to ensure that she went to work. After Jerline caught wind of this, the pair had a heated argument that moved Damas closer to what would become a very tragic case of familicide. Ironically, the husband and wife reportedly attended anger management classes together on that day which was the 16th of September, 2009. The next day, Damas checked in for work for only two hours, during and after which he complained that he wasn't feeling well, and he eventually asked for permission to leave. In a later statement, Damas revealed that his supposed illness on that day was a result of him becoming increasingly disturbed and frightened that his wife would eventually leave him. Upon his departure from his place of work, Damas went to a supermarket and bought a $5 fillet knife and a roll of duct tape, which he would later use to perpetuate his evil, in his own words, act. Footage from the Walmart security cameras shows Damas purchasing his murder weapon of choice. Damas stated that he was hesitant about the idea in his mind, but went home nonetheless. According to him, when he got home, his wife refused to speak to him and only did so when she asked him to sign some immigration papers, informing him that she still intended to leave him. It was at this point that he tied her up, taped her mouth, and murdered her in cold blood. Her autopsy revealed blunt force injuries to her right elbow and right eye, and deep extensive sharp force injuries to her left shoulder and neck. Instead of simply owning up to his crime, Damas opted to provide a somewhat laughable explanation for his actions. The then 33-year-old said that his actions were a result of a spell that was placed on him by his mother-in-law and or a co-worker. After killing his wife, Damas decided to take things even further. He proceeded to drag his children to a bedroom upstairs, where he slit their throats one after the other. After committing these heinous crimes, Misak did not hit the road like a typical criminal would do. Instead, he remained in the house till the following day. Whether he was haunted by what he had done and was too scared to run, or if he stayed to savor the works of his hands, no one knows till this day. Still speaking with police, 
Damas claims that he contemplated suicide. However, he changed his mind and did the next best thing. He packed up and drove to the Miami International Airport, where he took a flight back to Haiti because where better to seek refuge than his own home? A few days after the incident, Gerline's family and co-workers became worried as they hadn't heard from her. In addition to that, she had not reported to work, so they filed a missing persons report. After the report was filed, the police swung into action immediately. They proceeded to the Damas family's residence where they discovered Gerline's body in a bathroom in the house. The body of one of the children, Mazak, who was only nine years old at the time, was afterwards discovered in a bedroom on the second floor. His autopsy revealed sharp force injuries to the palm of his right hand, as well as extensive sharp force injuries encircling almost the entirety of his neck. In another bedroom on the second floor, the deputies found the bodies of the other four children. Marvin, who was only six years old, Maven, who was five at the time, Megan, who was three, and Morgan, who was sadly only 11 months old. One of the many things that sparked outrage in the hearts of all who heard this twisted tale was the fact that these children never got to grow up, make decisions, and create pathways for themselves, all because they were unlucky enough to have such a sick and selfish father. All four children reportedly sustained sharp force injuries to their neck. The Collier Sheriff at the time, Kevin Rambosk, called the killings the most horrific and violent event in county history. On the 23rd of September 2009, Damas was found hiding near a hotel in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. The Haitian National Police captured him based on a request from the FBI's legal attaché in the Dominican Republic. Afterwards, he was extradited to the USA. Upon apprehension, Damas was reported to have said, I know what I did was wrong. Bad spirits made me do it. You think I want to live after what I did? In a statement to the Naples Daily News, Damas confessed to murdering his wife and five children and stated that he wished to receive the death penalty for his crimes. Following his arrest, Damas was transported back to Collier County by the United States Marshal Service and there he was incarcerated. Despite his initial confession that he killed his wife and children, Damas later claimed that he did not stab his wife and children. Instead, he maintained the claim that the killings were an out-of-body experience. He said, they were not my family. I did not see any of their faces. People out here don't understand what it is like to be possessed by demons. In my mind, there is no case against me. Damas's pre and post trial period was a pretty strange ordeal. And that is putting it lightly. While his case trial was pending, he began to exhibit strange behavior. Misak refused to cooperate with anyone, the court, the attorneys, or jail staff. The court proceeded to appoint three experts to evaluate Damas's competence. He was found competent to proceed in June 2011. Afterwards, Damas's behavior became even worse and more bizarre. He was then re-evaluated and found incompetent to proceed with the trial on the 19th of March 2014. It was, however, stated that his condition had a substantial probability of responding to the treatment with the goal of restoring his competence to proceed in the reasonably foreseeable future. He was therefore committed to the custody of the Department of Children and Families and admitted into a mental health treatment facility in April 2014. In October 2014, roughly five years after the tragic event, Damas's competence was found to have been restored by a court order stating that facility records note Damas was aggressive, manipulative, and deceitful, and would engage in cooperative behavior when necessary to get something he wanted. While in custody, Damas took on a moniker of his own making, COG, which is an acronym for Child of God. He also refused to eat and shower for extended periods of time. He was once reported to have gone 30 days without taking a shower. Apparently, the smell from his cell was so bad that sometimes it made his other inmates physically ill. Damas's behavior in the courtroom also attracted much media attention. In August 2010, Damas was reported to have started singing out of nowhere, and he only stopped singing after his lawyer and the presiding judge asked him to relax. He, however, 
continued singing when the hearing was almost over. On a certain day in June 2017, Damas suddenly rose to his feet and stated that he wanted to represent himself and discharge his attorneys so that he could plead guilty to the charges against him. When his ability to represent himself was checked, he was found incapable because he suddenly began to ramble and speak incoherently and disjointedly. In October 2017, during a hearing, Damas was reported to have written a note to the presiding judge with the words, Go ahead, continue your work. May my blood be upon your shoulders. He also reportedly signed this note, COG. To prove how crazy and dangerous Damas was, sometimes he secured a safety restraint chair for the safety of staff whenever he was being transported to and from his court appearances. In line with his sick plan, Damas's erratic behavior caused the case to drag on for longer than it ordinarily should have, regardless that it was coming to him in the end. After all, the crimes were committed in 2009, and all these acts dragged the case all the way through 2017. On the 5th of September 2017, over eight years from the date of the crime, Misak Damas pleaded guilty to all six counts of first degree premeditated murder. And on the 27th of October that same year, the judge sentenced Damas to concurrent death sentences on all six counts. While pleading guilty, Damas put on one last show by claiming to have loved his children and wife. He said, I just want to say I'm truly sorry, especially to the family of my wife. I don't see them here today, but I just want to make sure for the record they know that. I know how much they love their sister, their daughter, their grandchildren. And then I want to make sure that everyone knows that I love them the most. I love my people, my wife, and children, he continued. But this thing happened. I don't have an answer for it. I wish I had an answer for it, but I don't. When I stand before great God, I will ask him a lot of questions. From now on, I'm just going to put my trust in him and say sorry to the whole world. Although Damas made these statements and pled guilty, he still appealed the decision to the Supreme Court on the grounds that the court erred in declining his request for self-representation. He also alleged that the court improperly weighed factors that he considered repetitive, such as his child's age and his parental relationship with the young children. To drive home his point, Damas questioned the death penalty's constitutionality. He claimed that it violates the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution because it is inherently cruel and unusual. The Supreme Court, however, held that his grounds for appeal were without merit and reaffirmed the decision of the lower court in January 2019, once again condemning Damas to face the death sentence. Sincerely, for a guy who confessed to his crimes immediately and was caught and pleaded to be given the death penalty, Damas sure doesn't seem eager to die. He had the opportunity to kill himself after killing his family, but instead he fled the country. And when his death wish was granted, he frantically appealed to have it mitigated. It is easy to see why many members of the public began to speculate that Damas believed that his punishment would be mitigated if he seemed crazy and pleaded for the worst possible punishment. And with that, we have come to the end of the Misak Damas case. What do you guys think about this case? Do you have any pity for Damas who claims that bad spirits are largely responsible for his misconduct? Or do you feel that he got what he deserved? Also, what is your opinion about the death penalty? Is it perfect for gruesome criminals? Or do you think nobody should be sentenced to death no matter the crimes they've committed? Let us know in the comment section directly below. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Misak Damas, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.